Welcome to the Mark Few Show. I'm Greg Heister. Week number two of the show, and, and Coach, we've got a game to talk about now, and I know it was an exhibition game, but uh, you learned something from this team. What did we learn? Yeah, well, I think we learned that uh, the freshmen are uh, going to be ready to go at, at times uh, this year. I think they came out hungry and, and eager to make plays and kind of show uh, what they were all about. So I thought that was a, a real positive step. Uh, for them and for us. It also showed that Matt's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. Uh, we're going to count on him a lot to do a variety of things for us offensively and defensively and, and uh, how important he is to us. But I also think there were signs that we had seen as a staff uh, that maybe other people hadn't, uh, just how much Robert Sacris came around and how, how important he's going to be. And I know this this program took a step a year ago defensively, a very good defensive team, and one of the best uh, defensive field goal shooting numbers in the country. But this team was different defensively the other night. With a lot of energy on the ball and guarding the ball and deflections, it seemed like every possession. Well, I hope that was evident. You know, uh, statistically, it didn't play play out to every possession. It seemed like it. Such a media uh, <laughs> embellishment, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, we have Meech Goodson at the point kind of triggering all that. Obviously, that's a huge strength of Meech's game. He's quick, you know, he's athletic, uh, he's a very good on-ball defender. You know, when you bring G.J. Villarino in to, to kind of spell him, same same kind of game. Manny, uh, Rop on the, uh, at the three spot, again, great defender, long, athletic, likes to make plays on the ball. Uh, you know, even Robert. Robert got out and had knocked two balls loose and went uh, coast to coast on one of them. So I, we think we can get out and, and pressure and, and, and make some plays defensively where, you know, last year we were, we were pretty darn solid about just getting in the gaps and, and stopping those up. And, and uh, we were long enough to block shots in there. That's how we garnered a lot of deflections last year. The play of uh, Mangisto Rop uh, the other night, he electrified the crowd, I think, and, and again. and. Another one of these young players that brings a lot of energy, but he was playing hard at both ends of the court. Yeah, I think 12 boards in, in you know, 20 minutes or less of action is a great statistic and kind of shows why we brought Manny in here. That's kind of what he does. He's shown that in a lot of big, big games and, and big international tournaments that he can rebound the ball at that position. He's kind of a ball hawker. He, you know, he, he's, he's kind of a gamer. You know, ironically, the coach of the... Uh, Alberta team it was a Canadian junior national coach, so Manny played under him, and that he's always described Manny as like, hey, just wait till the game start. I mean, he he's a gamer, and at least one game in, he's shown that. So. And Zag fans also got a feel, I think, for how big this team is going to be over the next few years. I mean, with Sam Dower and, and Kelly and, and these young, big post players. I mean, it's a big team. Big and skilled. You know, I think Sam showed he could he could score the ball. Kelly, Kelly's been a great addition. He's he's uh, a little bit kind of what uh, we've had in the past at that four spot or the trail spot to have a guy that skilled. He's got guard skills out there. He can pass. He can really shoot the ball out to three, uh, and just a great feel for the game. It's it's great to have that at that spot. But he yes he, he also likes to bang. You know he's not a finesse player by any stretch. So. I think Kelly Kelly's going to be a, a real critical piece to us this year. You know, is it, it, that he continues to grow and provide that kind of uh, uh, skill, uh, you know, out there in, in the four spot. It's the Mark Few Show. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll take a look back at the 2000-2001 season, a part of the decade of excellence. We'll be right back. Five seconds on the shot. Alex Hernandez running. Up court to Dickow. Dickow right wing three ball. Good by Dickow! Unbelievable. How about that? Ho, ho, ho. That old adage, getting there's one thing, staying there is another. And Gonzaga was about to embark on a new era. Enter Dan Dickow. A star in high school whose career sputtered at the University of Washington. He had friends at Gonzaga, like Zach Gord, Casey Calvary, and Richie Fromm. I'm no great recruiter. I just told him, Dan, you should come play. We'll be good. If you come across the mountains, 
I guarantee that you'll find a group of guys that have the same wants, the same desires that you do. I've got the red shirt year, and I'm going to be able to go against a very high level point guard in Matt every day in practice. It's going to do nothing but help me so that when it's my turn to be the point guard, you know, I felt that I would definitely be ready. So I said, what, you know, Dan, what is it that you want to do when you're done playing basketball? He said, well, I want to play in the NBA. And I remember kind of looking off into space thinking, okay, here's a kid that averaged seven points a game. You know, he's already going to be a junior in college and he, and he hasn't lost his dream. I was like, well, good for him. The motto around Zagville, we're not rebuilding, we're reloading. In the backcourt with Dan, a freshman guard from Oregon. A tall, skilled, great feel for the game guard named Blake Stepp, a son of a coach. You knew that this kid had that potential. The potential was always, all these guys that you played with, the potential was always obvious. You knew after a month if it was going to work or it wasn't. He's a point guard too. So, you know, right off the bat, I still hadn't met Blake. And so, you know, first week or two, we're kind of eyeing each other up. And, you know, right off the bat, within two weeks, we realized that, you know what? This is easy. We can play together. You don't have to sell Blake on anything. I mean, Blake's as tough a dude as ever we've ever had through here. You, know, you could have had 10 point guards here and it wouldn't have mattered to Blake. You know, and so and that's what made him so special was just his competitive spirit and his drive and confidence. And, uh, and they were perfect together. All right, good, great year. 2000, 2001, Dan Dickow's here, Blake Steps here. Uh, was that as important as any other year because it was the transition to a new set of players after that team that went to the Elite Eight and Sweet 16? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, I think there, there's been a couple times throughout this run, that being one of them, where I think, you know, maybe some people thought that it was over. Yeah. The year before, everybody thought, well, that was a neat run to the Elite Eight. Now, you know, there's no way you can do it again. And then that crew backed it up with another run to the Sweet 16 in their senior years, Matt and Richie Fromm and Mike Nielsen, Ryan Floyd and uh, that crew. Everybody's so identified with them, I think a lot of people thought that uh, it was over. So, uh, you know, having Blake coming in, we had Dan had been sitting out the year before, so we had an inkling to how good he could be. Uh, but again, it was, he was unproven, you know, he just had not posted those kind of numbers. Uh, uh, in, in his prior two years over at the University of Washington. So uh, I'll always remember their first game we came out. We actually played, that was when the CBA was trying to, you know, build up their popularity. So they were going around scheduling uh, college teams. And so in, in our exhibition, rather, you know, instead of playing like Alberta, we played the Yakima Sun Kings, who had some men. <laughs> you know, uh, Raja Bell was on that team, who's turned out to be, a, a, you know, one of the great. Uh, NBA guard who can really, really defend. Blake came out, I think the first half had 20 points as a true freshman in his first game. Against grown uh, men. Against grown yeah. men. And I mean, it was like a game in February or March. And I mean, we were going at it like it was a league game to decide the WCC championship, you know, or even a, an NCAA tournament game. I think right then and there, we figured out, hey, we could have something uh, special here, not only with Blake, but with the relationship with Dan and Blake playing together. And then I think kind of lost and all that is probably one of the all-time greatest Zags, certainly, uh, Casey Calvary. I mean, he was just such a, an entity, uh, both on the glass and in scoring and just with intimidation and toughness. And I mean, he's definitely got to be in the top two or three all-time players here, I would think. Yeah, 2000, 2001 ended with another run to the Sweet 16, the third in a row for this Gonzaga basketball program. Let's take a break. When we come back, the Coeur d'Alene Casino Fan Question of the Week. We'll check in with Adam from Indianapolis. And welcome back to the Mark Few Show. All right, let's take a look now at our Coeur d'Alene Casino Fan Question of the Week. Adam. 